In this video, I'll be showing you how to set your location in Stellarium. But before we begin, I want to make sure you can get in and out of the program fluidly, which can be confusing at first. Now, if you'll notice in the left-hand corner here, if you drag over the icons, it'll show you which each of those icons do. Here is the Quit button. That will exit you out of the program, which isn't always convenient. More convenient button here is the Full Screen Mode button. Uh, by clicking that, you can exit full screen and return to full screen. Therefore, if you want to look something up, that button can be quite convenient. So first you'll notice that by default it puts you in Paris. I am not in Paris. I am in Seattle, Washington. So what I want to do is to change it to Seattle, Washington so I can see the sky there. If you go up to the location window here, uh, there's lots of places in the database, but you'll notice that the red arrow is pointing right at Paris. Now, say I wanted to go to Florida, I could click there. It's daytime, so now it looks like daytime, but I'm in the northwest, and so this is really the region I want to go to. Uh, I want to be a little bit more specific. I'm in Seattle, so that's what I want to find. Um, I could use exact latitude and longitude coordinates for where I am, but... For bigger cities and more well-known locations such as observatories, they're usually in the database. It doesn't appear to pull it up right away, uh, so sometimes you'll have to type a few times because querying the database can take some time. But after uh, trying it a few times, you'll see that indeed Stellarium does have Seattle in the database. So I clicked on that and I have now moved my location to Seattle. Since that's where I will be using this program most, I'm going to use it as my current location. And it puts you on this nice sunny day in a farm field, which isn't accurate at all. But there, for some reason, the farm field is used everywhere, even if you're in the middle of the ocean. So there's going to be two, key, uh, two key, key locations that we are going to be using throughout the semester, one being the North Pole, which is around here, but not exactly because the latitude would be 90 degrees and longitude is kind of irrelevant. So I'm going to change that to 90 degrees, uh, so that will put me at the North Pole. If you recall, lat uh, latitude runs from 0 to 90 degrees, and longitude is kind of uh, irrelevant at the North Pole. Uh, you might want to think about that for a second, but really, that, that's true. Uh, so I'm going to put the altitude here at zero uh, so that I can be at sea level and I don't have to deal with if I'm on a mountain or a hill or anything like that. So before I add this location to the database, I want to make sure that I am indeed at the North Pole. If I'm at the North Pole, the North Star, also known as Polaris, will be directly overhead. So somewhere around here, uh, since I have the atmosphere on, Polaris isn't bright enough for it to be labeled like Vega and Deneb are over there. So I'm going to check to see if the stars rotate around Polaris. We'll learn later in semester why that is. And uh, I should say later on in the course. But the stars seem to be rotating around this point, And I can click on it and get all the information on it. And sure enough, it is Polaris. So I want to just double check here. Does that seem to be directly overhead? And indeed, it looks like it's directly overhead, but you also notice that the stars are moving horizontally, so we are indeed at the equator. So I'm going to slow the time down a little bit here so everything's not spinning while I am uh, messing around in the location window. And now I want to save this so that I can return to it any time that I go to into Solarium. So I'm going to call this the North Pole. Seems like an appropriate title. Uh, the United States uh, is actually part of the Arctic Council. Nobody really owns the North Pole, so I'm just going to leave it at the United States. And now I'm going to return to Seattle. Now I want to check if it's actually in my database. So I can type in North Pole into the search, search query. And indeed, there's the North Pole, which I just entered. And now I can go from Seattle, and by clicking on this, then I can switch back to the North Pole location and view the stars from there. Uh, another important uh, location we're going to be using frequently throughout the semester is the equator, which is around this region. I'm going to select, select somewhere over here in the Pacific Ocean, but at the equator the latitude is zero degrees, so I want that to be zeros all the way across the board, and let's just move that more into the ocean so that I have 90 degrees. As you can see, this still got the same ground as before, even though we're in the middle of the ocean. Uh, so we're going to use this 90 degrees west on the button uh, exactly 
for throughout the semester. So you want to make sure uh, that we're on the same page and that's what you actually save as your location for when you're at the equator. As you can see, the farm field's still here. Uh, now I want to make sure that I'm there. So Polaris should be underneath the north cardinal point if I'm actually at the true equator. And we'll learn again, learn why that is later on in the course. Uh, but I don't see Polaris. Uh, I'm turning off the ground so that I can see underneath the horizon. I still don't see Polaris. I'm going to speed it up, see if those stars are indeed rotating around that point, which it looks like they are, but I still don't see Polaris. And I'm going to turn that, the cardinal point off and see if that was hiding in it. It wasn't. The atmosphere is coming up, and now we start to know why. It's because the atmosphere is on. So I'm going to click the atmosphere off. Now Polaris is bright enough where it shows. And just to verify, I can click back onto the ground, and sure enough, it's right on the horizon. I can turn the cardinal points back on, and it's right underneath the north cardinal point, as it should be. So we are indeed at the equator. Uh, once again, I'm going to slow it down so everything's not spinning as I go to my location window. And I'm going to save this location. Now, it's not really a city. It's kind of a spot I picked on the planet. Uh, I'm going to call it the equator. Uh, this is, those waters are probably governed by, uh, the, by Ecuador, but I'm not going to guarantee, I can't guarantee that. So... Uh, don't take my word for it, but I'm just going to say that this is in uh, Ecuador since it sounds like equator and it's kind of fun to say. Equator, Ecuador. Uh, now I have to type it in again uh, since it didn't. This one's changing country caused it to remove what I had typed in there earlier. I'm going to enter in the equator, Ecuador, add to list. Now it didn't flash, so I'm not sure it actually saved it. This kind of can happen once in a while. So I'm going to just check the database here and type in equator and see if it's actually indeed in my database and sure enough it looks like it's there and if I click on it I'm at the equator I'm gonna go back to Seattle here by returning the default location and I'm back in Seattle and I want to just make sure and double check that the North Pole is in the database so this is just to kind of show you how you can flip around now I want to go back to the North Pole and click on that and I'm back at the North Pole and that's where the night sky would look like at the North Pole and we go back to Seattle. So now that you, once you have the proper location set, you can do all sorts of things and plan out your observing night uh, from the location you're at, uh, which will be coming up in the next segment in which I'll show you some cool things you can do with Stellarium.